So when they told me the Bronco was going to be arriving in a couple weeks at the dealership, I told them, nah, I don't think I'm going to buy it. I was this close to not getting it. But I'm glad I did because I have enjoyed the Ford Bronco way more than I thought I was and I've learned a lot about this vehicle over the last couple months after doing some long road trips, some overlanding trips and getting after it on the trail. And today what I'm going to do is I'm going to share with you some of the things I like, some of the constructive criticisms I have and I'll show you some of the bumps and bruises it's taken along the way and some of the mods I've done and some of the things I've got in store for this Bronco. I like it more than I thought I did. Got a lot to talk about today. Welcome to Trail Recon, I'm Brad, and today what I want to do is share with you some of the pros and cons of owning a Ford Bronco, things that I've learned over the last few months after putting a lot of miles both on and off-road. Now this is the Badlands Edition with the Sasquatch package, which means you get 35 inch tires straight from the factory and you get a better performing suspension with a little bit taller lift. It's very capable right out of the box. Now let me share with you, I just went to Texas and back and it was over 2200 miles. It was a long drive, but I never got driver's fatigue. It was very comfortable. It's a smooth ride on road. Now off road on easy to moderate trails, the Bronco performs very, very well. And I think that's what most folks are going to do with it. They're going to come out to beautiful places like this, just go explore some easy and moderate trails and not get crazy. Now, while I was in Texas, we did push the Bronco pretty hard. And well, it did perform well. It is definitely not as capable as a solid axle Jeep Wrangler. The independent front suspension of the Bronco does have some limitations and we were pitching a little bit on some of those obstacles. However, we did make it through some very difficult trails and I gotta give it to the Bronco, it held up well. I just think I would have been happier sitting in my Jeep. All right, we're gonna dive right into the biggest criticism I have with the Ford Bronco. Now, I ordered this with the Lux package, and when the order with the Lux package, it comes with a front-facing camera, parking sensors, and adaptive cruise control. And I just assumed that, well, if I got the steel bumper group, I could just throw a winch on there, just like I did my Jeep, and get out on the trails and get after it. Well. The adaptive cruise control sensor is right here. What a terrible place to put it. I mean, there is not a lot of good solutions out there right now for putting a winch on here if you have adaptive cruise control. Now, there is some relocation brackets, but I'm sorry, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not going to do something that is a safety feature like that, relocate it, and then fingers crossed that the dealer might recalibrate it for me or that it works somebody needs to come out with a bumper that allows you to integrate all of that. And so hopefully the aftermarket will catch up. But if I had done it all over again, I don't know that I would have got the Lux package. Now you can see though, it is good having steel because we have banged up this and bruised it up pretty good and it's held up pretty well. I need to get some black paint and fix some of these little scratches. One criticism that I have uh, while I'm down here is if you look at the independent front suspension, the A-arms, there are bolts coming right through there. And you can see on the driver's side over here, well, I hit a rock and that's almost a hang up point. And I think over time, that bolt, those threads that are sticking through, well, those are just gonna get stripped away and it'll be interesting to see what happens. I think it would be nice if that was a little more flush mounted or inverted or something, they would have come up with a different solution. But all in all, I do like the front end of the Bronco. I think it looks really aggressive. Now, some of you are probably wondering, what has taken me so long to start modifying this thing? And well, it's kind of an intentional. I really wanted to get to know the Ford Bronco in stock form before I started modifying it. However, I think we're at a point where I can start doing a little bit more to it. And so I'm gonna take advantage of some of the accessory ready uh, mounts and wiring that they have. We were off-road recently in the dark and I was really wanting for some more lights. So I think we're gonna do some off-road lights and uh, we're gonna figure, we gotta figure out a winch uh, solution and maybe we'll start tinkering with uh, suspension and doing some other stuff. But just a couple things up here on the hood. One, I did, you'll see behind me, that is the GMRS antenna. And if you didn't catch that video, I did a whole video on how to install a GMRS radio in this Bronco and it was very easy to do. That windshield right there, yeah, that's my second windshield. I, I was hoping that it wasn't gonna be like the Jeep and be as easy to break, but uh, I only had about 2,000 miles on it and yep, 
I had to go replace the windshield, so that was kind of a bummer. One thing I have a criticism about, and this is a personal thing, I know some people like them, I just don't like these little tie downs. I mean, let's be honest. I'm here in Southern California. I don't need a limb riser, so I'm not gonna install those. And I have a soft top. So I'm not gonna carry a canoe that needs to be tied down on a soft top. I wish that this was an option. So those that like them can have them. I know some people like them because it's like, helps them navigate. Well, if you've got that massive screen inside with the front facing and 360 degree camera, you can see everything you need. I love that camera. I don't need these things. I just think they're slight. I just don't like them. I almost forgot. There's one more thing up here that just recently happened. So my windshield washers, they don't work. Uh, I know it's leaking from somewhere. And so what I'm gonna do, I'm, I'm actually gonna use you guys right now to see if we can figure out what's going on. So I'm gonna set the camera up over by where the windshield washer bottle is. And let's see if we can figure out where the leak is. I don't know why it's not working, but let's see if we can figure it out. Okay, well it was hard to tell from the camera, but it looks like, looks like there might be a hole in this hose or maybe it's disconnected, which means, oh man, I might have to take the cowl off to get all the way back there, but okay, I'll have to figure that out. Thanks for uh, helping me with that guys. At least now I can see where it's leaking from. All right, stepping over to the side of the Bronco, let's talk about the rock rails, which we've put to good use and they've held up really well. The only thing is this little end cap came off pretty easy. I was actually surprised at how easy that came off and thankfully I saved it so we can uh, put it in there. But I think what I will do is put a little glue in there and uh, prevent it from coming out again. Now, one of my second biggest complaints about the Ford Bronco is the soft top. Now, I originally ordered this with the hard top, but they said that, look, if you convert to a soft top, we can get it to you sooner and you'll have all the accessories, you know, windshield washer and defroster in the rear, so you can add a hard top later, which will end up being over $2,000, I'm afraid. So, I do like a soft top. I like how easy this is to open, having that open air experience right away. The fabric is really good, but Look, I, I did 26 years in the military and I understand what it is for the government to search for the lowest bidder and what kind of quality you get sometimes with that. I think that Ford might have gone with the lowest bidder when it comes to this soft top because the quality, the, the attention to detail, it's just not there. I mean, look at this. Look how flimsy this is. I can stick my hand all the way up in here and reach inside the Bronco and when it's windy, this is flapping around quite a bit. Not happy with that, it's not a good design. And the other thing that I don't like is, look at this window, look how wavy this window is. And the way that the rear hatch opens is you have to do it with two hands, which my wife really doesn't like. Uh, she's like, if she's at the grocery store and she's got bags in her hands and she wants to put them in the back and she needs to lift that up, she's gotta set the bags down and then lift the rear up. So. Lifting that up folds this even more and I just worry over time what that's gonna look like. I mean, this should be a nice tight window right there. So I'm not super happy with that. And let me show you a couple things on the back with the latches. Right, let me quickly show you how this operates. Now, I'm pretty happy with the tailgate and the hinge on here with the 35 inch tire. It does really well. Plus, I've installed a tailgate table back here, which it's a must. Now. Here's where the frustration comes in with getting in and out of here. Now, I'm six foot two, so if I want to even access anything, I'm either doing this number, which is not very comfortable, or there's two latches under here. So you cannot do this with one hand. You need two hands. So you press up on these little latches, and you lift up, and it's not super light, and then there is a little bar here that holds it into place. And then the groceries or whatever that you set on the ground, then you can load up in here. It's not the most convenient thing. Plus, it's only raised at 10 inches. So look, I, I'm still, you know, I still have to kind of crawl inside here uh, to access anything that might be far in the back. Now, let's talk a little bit about the gear that I've got back here, because this has kind of become my everyday carry. So I mentioned I have the tailgate table. I do have a 25 liter Dometic fridge. I've got an ARB air compressor. I've got my tool bag. I've got my Wagon Tech lithium cube for powering the fridge. I've got a first aid kit and recovery gear. It all fits back here perfectly. There is lots of storage back here. 
And if you're in the market for any of this gear, we've got this stuff and more over at trailrecon.com. I will leave a link down below. Now, when it comes time to close this guy, you gotta fold the arm up. And initially when I got it, it would just drop down and automatically latch, but it's not latched. So you actually have to pull down on it quite a bit. And oftentimes, for whatever reason, the driver's side still doesn't latch and I've gotta do it. And I've gotta be pretty forceful with it. So I don't know, you know, the Jeep Wrangler ones, they zip open, they flop over, and then you have easy access. I don't like this design. So there's a criticism. All right, let's talk about the inside of the Ford Bronco. And I mentioned this is a pretty comfortable place on a long road trip. We'll start off with the seats. The seats are very, very comfortable. They nailed it with the seats. Now I went with the vinyl option, so you can get leather or you can get vinyl, and I chose the vinyl and honestly, I'm really glad I did for a couple reasons. First of all, these don't feel like that vinyl of the old 70s vehicle. It's very nice, soft and supple. It's a very nice material. Plus, when you order the vinyl, you get complete rubber inside. So there is no carpet in here. For a guy like me that's getting in and out all the time with dirty feet, that is very nice. Now, if you opt for the leather option, you'll get carpet all the way through and you'll get power seats. I'm kind of indifferent about power seats. I like power seats, but at the end of the day, how often are you actually adjusting your seat? I mean, these work just fine. The steering wheel controls are nicely placed, but for me personally, I'm still not getting used to it. When I get in and out of the Jeep and then in and out of the Bronco, I'm just trying to figure out which one is which and where everything is. You know, the volume button is always messing with me. Uh, the screen, man, the screen is amazing. And I mentioned that the front facing camera and the 360 degree camera, super crystal clear. Plus just having this large display makes it really nice. And I do like how everything's laid out. I like that the sway bar disconnect and the lockers are all up here. I like that you have the auxiliary switches right over the head. It's all very nicely laid out. Now in the back, there's lots of leg room and it's equally as comfortable back there. So I like the rear. I do wish that there were some air vents up here, not just the ones that are under the seat, uh, because it is nice to have that air blowing on you sometimes on a hot day. And I think that was a big miss by not having some vents back there. The other criticism I have in the rear is those rear seats, while they lay down, there's still a big hump there. So they don't lay down perfectly flat. So if you needed to lay something flat back there, or if you were gonna sleep in the back of your Bronco, you'd have to figure out a solution because trying to sleep over that big hump, it wouldn't be very much fun. For the rest of the interior of the Bronco, I think they did a good job. I know there's some criticisms that people have about the cheap plastic, but let's be honest, a lot of vehicles these days have cheap plastic, and we'll know over time how well it holds up, but for now, I'm pretty happy with it. Ah, I almost forgot one more thing on the interior, and this is a big criticism my wife Regina has, and that is the placement of these grab handles. So look, it's on 35s, it's lifted, so it's a little taller to get into. And so if you're a shorter person, you use these handles to get in. Well, let's be honest, that handle doesn't help you lift up. You need something that kind of pulls you up right here. And so I wish they would have put this handle here. Now, my understanding is the reason they did this is because they wanted you to be able to triangulate when you're off road. Well, one, I still prefer the handle right here. And two, look how flimsy these things are. Both of them are super flimsy. I'll be worried over time how well these hold up. So I don't know. I think they would have done a better job by putting a handle right there on the A-pillar. And I know my wife Regina would have been happier about it. Now let's talk about the power plant on this Ford Bronco. So I opted for the 2.7 liter turbocharged V6, which puts out 330 horsepower and 400 pound feet of torque. And I'm glad I did that because I love the power that this Bronco has when I'm towing with it, when I'm accelerating up hills and just general driving around town, it's got power for days. And I'll mention that they did a great job with the exhaust note. It's got the right amount of rumble, but it's not noisy or obnoxious when you are on on the freeway on long trips. Now, uh, I mentioned that we've got that windshield washer problem. And a couple months ago, if you watched the Joshua Tree video, I did have some electrical glitches and I'm still not sure 100% what it was, but when I started investigating in here, I did find two loose ground wires. They weren't crazy loose, but they were loose enough. Plus, I went in the fuse box and, and started pressing down on the fuses and there were a couple that weren't seated all the way. 
whatever it was, it ended up fixing the electrical issues and I haven't had any other problems since, but that has been the only thing. Hopefully, long-term reliability is a plus, but right now I'm pretty happy with it. And I know that there's some folks out there that are criticizing, like, why isn't there an engine cover in here to make this all pretty? Well, honestly, I don't need an engine cover. I actually like coming in here and being able to look right at the mechanicals and the wiring. All right, pretty happy with the power plant overall. Now, I know it seems like I've been bashing on the Bronco quite a bit, but there are some things that need improvements. And this is the first year model, and hopefully they'll be refining these things. And hopefully somebody over at Ford is listening to all of us with some of these similar complaints and make some changes going forward. Now, what's the plans for this Ford Bronco? I'm gonna keep using this. I think it's great on long trips and uh, I wanna make it a little bit more capable. So what am I gonna do? Well, top of mind I mentioned is figuring out how to put a winch on here. And hopefully there'll be a manufacturer that comes out with a winch solution that allows you to use the adaptive cruise control, a nice stylish bumper, not some nasty, crazy behemoth. I want something that looks good because aesthetics matter. Also, I mentioned that I'm going to put some lights on here. I do hit the trails uh, at night and uh, we need a little bit more off-road uh, visibility. So we're going to be doing that. I also would like to put a lift kit on here and raise this up a little bit more. The unfortunate thing is there's not a lot of manufacturers right now that have lift kits specific for the Bronco and those that do, they're in short supply. So hopefully as time goes on, there'll be more choices and there'll be more availability of those. I'm also gonna change out the wheels because I just wanna personalize it and make it mine. And so I'm gonna get rid of the stock wheels. And then will I put bigger tires on it? Well, I think the answer is yes. I think I definitely wanna go to 37s, but I've been paying attention and there are some weak links to the steering and a little bit of the suspension components that will have to be addressed. And as we go further and further, we get to know the Bronco more, we see what other folks are coming up for solutions, we'll figure that out. But I think, I think this will be lifted on 37s before the end of the year. Fingers crossed that that all works out. Now the one question I've been getting asked a lot is, do I like the Ford Bronco more than my Jeep Wrangler? The answer to that is no. I'm way more comfortable and confident off-road in my Wrangler. Now, maybe over time, this will grow on me a little bit more. I do like the Bronco, don't get me wrong. I just hope that they work on fixing some of those things that we talked about. Now, if you stuck around to the end of this video, thank you. And if you'd like to see more Bronco content, make sure you hit that subscribe button and go check out this video right here. Thanks for watching.